Oh, look how nice it is out there. Started uh, raining today. So, anyway, washed out. Oh, yeah. So, I'm in the uh, hotel lab. And uh, I've got this stuff set up. And I want to show you something. Um, I modified my uh, lamp just a little so I could get some nice uh, background lighting for my uh, demonstration here. And uh, my desks. Um, see? Look how nice this looks. Right? You guys can actually like see me. There's enough light on my face. Isn't that awesome? Um, <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to do my best to show you guys how to do data logging with nothing more than the free Pulsefire program by uh, William Clanzar. Clanzar? I probably said that wrong. Sorry, William. Anyway, um, this program was originally designed for all sorts of stuff, and uh, William has compacted this thing, and it's 100% free, and you can download it and enjoy. So, basically, what you really, only thing you need for this setup is an Arduino. Now, this is a Mega. I haven't used it a whole lot. I just got it. Um, the one I'm using is this one right here. Um, I don't even, I'm not even going to try to say it. It's a real old one. Um, it was donated. Roll Bush sent it to me actually. But it's really similar to the uh, Uno. So, what's really cool about this is that uh, basically this setup to do data logging for what I was doing only is going to cost you what it is to buy one of these Arduinos. You can go to Radio Shack and get one for like 30 bucks. So you can have a full data logger, pulser, and everything else for 30 bucks. Software is free. Um, if you go to uh, open-source-energy.org and you click on open, uh, I think it's open source projects, find the link for Pulsefire and you can download it for free and uh, you can play with it, you can check it out, you can do whatever you want. Um, right there is the name of it. This is, uh, I'm using 1.0.4 and uh, basically it's got an interface here. I'm just going to set the camera right here and we'll, we'll do this first. Um, basically the first thing you're going to want to do, I think that light will work. Does that look alright? Alright, it's good enough. We're going to have to make it work. I'll zoom out a little. Alright, the first thing you're going to want to do when you download it, you're going to run it. Right there's the run. I'll go ahead and close it out just to show you. Um, but uh, a quick demonstration. Well, we'll go ahead and let it load and I'll show you. I got it set up to auto connect, so it's automatically going to connect for me. Uh, when it connects, if you have an LCD screen, it'll run through a little cycle and you'll see it. But basically, you want to make sure you plug in your Arduino via the serial port on the Arduino and your USB. Alright, and basically what's happening now, everything's loading. Alright, it's good to go. Now, before you start, you're going to want to plug it into the USB, plug it into the Arduino. Okay. Um, and then basically what you're going to do is you're going to go to settings. And right here you're going to have to flash your Arduino. And basically, um, hmm, maybe that's not it. Maybe it's in system. Nope, that's not it. I know it's settings. Okay. Uh, well, this thing is pretty awesome and powerful. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Oh, you know what? Time out. I'm connected. All right. Sorry. I was correct. What you do is you're going to hit burn. And you're going to go in here and select what you have. Um, depending on what you have, this is uh, selections for uh, the Mega and uh, different things. I'm just going to leave it on all. No, no, that's fine. You can look at your chip right there and it will give you a, a part number. Alright, and that's the number that you're looking for. 
bad demonstration, huh? Oh well. Anyway, select what you got. For instance, I'm using a uh, 128. Or 168. No, it's a 3. Hold on. It's a 328. I think it was a 28. Okay, and it gives me selections. And it kind of says here what it is, LCD. Uh, do you have one, true or false? And, you know, you just got to kind of play around with it. Most of these are all 16 megahertz. And um, down here you're going to select the COM port. I know mine's on COM7. Okay. And they are pr the programmer, um, basically, depending on what you select up here, it usually automatically selects those. Um, you just have to play around with these. Even if you don't have an LCD screen, you can still flash it as one. But basically you're going to go down here and hit flash. It's going to do its thing. And hopefully it's going to work. If it don't, see the thread that we have started that you downloaded this software from. Okay, I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. And then basically you're going to select your COM port. Alright. And you're going to hit connect. And it should connect. Which we just did. Um, while we're letting that load again, um, the final result you're going to have is actually a graph over time per voltage, which is what I'm doing. Um, I'm actually recording this right here. I'm uh, running off some capacitors just for testing. These are little super caps and uh, just running off these to do quick little runs and you can see it that way. Alright so it's loaded and what are we going to do now? Well we're going to set it up. PWM is your outputs. Um, I have this stuff set up all weird so don't even pay attention to it. Uh, but basically what you're really going to do for this experiment is you're going to go here to um, pins. Okay I've got uh, Depending on how you, have every, how you have everything set up, right now I've got 3 and 4, or 4 and 5 set up as off, okay, so they're not being used, because I'm actually using 4 as my analog input, okay. And by the way, you can watch this video in 1080p so you can actually see what I'm doing. Anyway, so basically I got these off, I just got, I make sure these are off under the pins tab. Alright, then I'm going to go to inputs, alright, now I'm using input 4 right there the one going to my lead okay which is analog input 4 right here now I've got this box I've got a lot of stuff on it a lot going on but you don't even need that really all you need is this and a single input and that's it so that's all I'm using actually so I'm using a single input and ground so I've got pin 4 set up to do what I want to do right so basically what I'm going to do it's on the analog. Um, I'm going to select four, and I'm going to select volts, division per volts. All right. Uh, I am going to adjust this number. This number is actually your uh, 680. This is your scale. All right. So, for instance, the best and coolest thing about this program is that it does data logging. So I can go to graphs. All right. Since I set up my input under div uh, division volts, all right, volts per division or whatever, on the graph here, go down and find the graph that is labeled right here, division volts. Can you see that? Now, now that I've got that set up, and I know. I've got a battery connected to it, so I know it's working. I'm going to turn my voltmeter on and make sure I got the right one. All right. Excellent. Um, the next thing you're going to do after you get your input set up, okay, this 255 index is already going to stay there. The map, I've got this set at exactly what I know what it is. This is probably your best option, and then you can play with this number from here. I found this to change depending on what you're doing and what power source you're using and all this kind of stuff very touchy. Once you get the input set up, I'm using a, a very low voltage, less than 5 volts. I'm not even sure if you can make it more than that. So over here in the system, I've got my volts uh, per division dot, okay, set at a thousand. And in my graphs here, if you look, I've got 0 0.073. That's actually my voltage. 0 0.073 of a volt. Okay. So if I go back to inputs, uh, sorry, system, and I change this to 10 on my graph, 
it now changed. Now it's 6.8 volts per division. Okay. But I don't want that. Because I know I'm in the high range, low voltage deal. Alright, so that is the voltage. Now, all I've got here is the Arduino connected to analog 4, okay, and ground, and that's it. Positive comes down here, goes to the positive side, positive side of my capacitor bank. Negative side goes back up here to the ground on the Arduino. You can plug this right into the ground, it doesn't matter, it's still going to work for you. Okay, and uh, basically this value right here. Oh, let me show you one more thing before we get too far. There's a setting in the uh, inputs. If you scroll back up to the top, you've got to make sure you've got the input enabled. If it's not enabled, it's not checkbox, it won't work. Okay, and it's got this jitter. What the jitter does is if you put this at like zero, it's just going to sit there and jump all over the place. Alright, so if I go back to my graphs, it's going to sit there and jump all over the place all day long. See it jumping? See it moving? But if I go back and I change that jitter, I got it set at 4. It seems about the best. We'll put it at 3. I put it at 3. Now, only when it sees a change will it update. Okay? So it's barely updating. And I had it set at 4. We'll go put it back at 4 because seem to be about what I like. That's why it's there. So I just set the jitter back at 4, go back to graphs, and it's it's pretty steady. Only when the voltage change is when you're going to see a change. So I've got it hooked up to my capacitor bank. Capacitor bank's hooked up to my little pulse monitor. It's only at 0 .042 volts. Now, I'm getting 0 .059 here. Um, I adjusted my chart to get it exactly what I want. And basically, you just adjust this number to get it to read high and low values exactly what you like. I play with this number all the time and get it as close as possible. Um, it's pretty darn accurate for what it is. I'm not going to be using the voltages this low, so it doesn't bother me to have that if that's a little bit off. And a matter of fact, I should probably play with it some more just to get it even closer. Um, I'm going to hold this meter up here. And what I want you to watch is I'm going to charge... I've got this little, uh, uh, what is it, like a helicopter thing, and I've just got the, the charger battery pack, and I'm going to connect this up to my capacitor bank, alright, and this capacitor, or this charger will only allow this capacitor bank to go to a certain voltage, because it's designed to charge this teeny tiny lithium uh, battery, alright, little bitty thing. So for this demonstration, I'm not using too much. But basically I want to show you how accurate this is. And watch the chart. Alright. Um, that's good. I'm going to turn this charger on and watch what happens. It's graphically showing me voltage change. And voltage change by my meter. Now, once this gets up to about 4.2 volts, it shuts off because it's not supposed to overcharge this little battery. It's designed to shut off at that voltage. Now, shut off early. I'm going to do it again. All right, and get it charged all the way up. That's about it. Looks like my batteries might be going dead on my charger. All right, now you can see how close my voltages are. See how, see how much closer my voltages are? I mean, that's point zero 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 of a volt, and that is accurate. That is awesome. So I'm going to turn my charger off, and I'm going to basically take the leads off of my, uh, tell you what, I'm going to take my leads off, oh yeah, plenty of them, I'm going to take my leads off of uh, my charger, I'm going to connect them on my little pulse motor here. Now, why would you want a data log like this? Well, basically, I wanted to see how long this little thing will run on this charge. And then I can modify the circuit a little bit and do it again. And then by the time this is over, I'll show you how to actually graph this data. I'll tell you what, before we start running, 
I need to show you how to set up data log to save the data log. So, let's do that real quick. To set up data logging, you're going to go to settings. All right? And uh, in the settings, you're going to set up a data logger. Oh, it started to run. So, you're going to set up a data logger. In this data logger thing, you're going to name it. I've named it um, we'll just put a one behind here so I can differ differentiate. I want to do a timestamp that leaves time settings on the chart. Speed. That is how often it, it uh, sets the information into the file. I'm going to set it at 5000 which is uh, a fifth of a second. Yeah. No. That's 30 seconds, 10 seconds, 5 seconds. Sorry. That's one second, two seconds, five seconds, and so forth. So you can set this really high. You can set this, you know, up to well, whatever that is a day. Um, so I'm going to set it five thousand. That's uh, that's five seconds. And then the fields. You have to select what you want. In my case, I've just drug over the volts per division. But let's say I was also mapping um, the CPU frequency. Boom, I've just added it. But I don't want that, so I'm taking it out. And I'm going to hit save. Okay? Now, in order to start the process of data logging, I'm going to hit enable. Alright? So I'm hitting enable, and boom. Wherever this path is, which is where I saved the file, which in this case is uh, my documents, it saved a file. So let's go to my documents. Who knows what I have in here? And uh, let's see. Somewhere in here should be a text file named it exactly what I wanted it to. Super cap test. Test one. If I open this up, look what I get. Alright, so I'm just going to leave this file open. I don't even know if I can refresh the window. No, I can't. Uh, Alright, so I've got data in here, and I've got this information right here. Like, what is this? Okay, well, this is the time and date. Obviously, my time is way off. My date's 2004 on this PC because it doesn't have a good battery in it. This is an old school laptop, and it's running this software just fine. So, so basically, every five seconds, uh, the timer. See? 58, 3, 8, 13, 18. Let me close this again. I do not want to save it. And I'm going to reopen it. And since we've just been sitting here, look. All right, it's writing to this file. This is the information you're going to use for data chart for the chart. You can see the, the this over here is the value of that chart. Now there isn't a decimal point here. It's just a whole number. You're going to have to make it a decimal point in your chart. All right, just, so just remember that this is 3.504 volts. Okay. All right, enough of that. We know where to go. You save it wherever you want in this path. Okay, and let's go back out to graphs, and there's my graphs. Now, just for fun, before I actually start my motor, I'm just going to short these leads out and watch what happens. I'm just going to tap them together. Boom. See my chart? Boom, again, again, again. So I'm just shorting those capacitors out, just showing you that this is live, live recorded data right here. Okay? And just for fun, I'll short them out and get the voltage kind of low. And then I'll charge it back up for you so we can actually graph the chart. So I'm going to graph the chart. All right, here we go. I'm going to turn the charger on. And we're charging. We're charging the capacitor. And uh, once we get up to, well, it, my battery's must be going dead, so not quite 4 volts. Oh, it's going to go up now. Oh, that's it. Okay. All right, so it's just about four volts. My meter is reading exactly the same as that. So I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna hook it up to my uh, pulse motor here. All right. That'll work. Hook it up to my pulse motor, and uh, basically I don't even know need to know what time it is I'm starting this because I know. So I'm gonna start up my pulse motor. And basically what you'll see is the uh, the readings are going to start going down. 
the readings on my chart are start going down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this run and uh, it looks like it's going to run for a while. It doesn't run near as long as it used to when I was doing uh, you know my other testing on it because uh, I've been playing with it, pushing it around, dragging it around, and I need to reset everything so it runs the best. Uh, that, that cap that I actually had during the uh, demonstration I did when I first built this, it's actually probably 10, 20 farads. It's probably pretty big. Uh, these are 4.7 farads at 2.7 volt. I've got four of them together, so actually my capacitance uh, divides by four, right? Uh, capacitors in uh, series. Or is that parallel? No, that's series. All right, so uh, we'll be back once this gets done running, and we'll chart this out. I'll show you how to do that. Ah. All right, and we're back. I uh, I went ahead and ran this thing three, four times. I think three times. Uh, in between there, I shorted it out once, recharged it completely. First time, I just charged it back up. The charge times are so quick that I probably should set my chart if I want to see the charge time. I need to set my chart at like, you know, one second. But I got five seconds in there, so the chart might kind of fluctuate. Anyway, now that we have successfully data logged our information, now normally you'd run this for days, hours, months, whatever. And uh, for those out there running Mendini chargers and stuff, if you want to uh, track your batteries, well, that's what you do. Um, so basically, now that we're good, you can just leave it connected. I'm going to disconnect it. Boop. All right, and I'm no longer connected. And I'm going to basically grab this file that I've saved right here. Let's take a look at it real quick. Look at the values that I got. All right, so basically I started data logging here and came down. And then I charge it back up right there, and then I let it run again. And then I brought it all the way down to like zero volts or low, shorted it out. Uh, then I charged it back up. Now you can see I only took like short little increments there. Um, yeah, every so many seconds. All right, so that's my data. All right, and then I went ahead and shorted it out and let it kind of float, and then I charged it back up. It's kind of interesting. It only took. Uh, 42, let's see, 36. Ah, that just seems weird. It's every 5 seconds. 5, 10, 15, 20. All right. 20 seconds. That's about right. It's about right. So, unfortunately, I should have set this at about a second and I would have got a little bit better data on my charge. Uh, but for this demonstration, that's right. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this file and copy it over to my good computer because I don't have the correct uh, Windows software on here. All right. Be right back. Okay, now, I'll first off, I'm going to say, I'm going to start this whole entire thing by saying I am nowhere near an expert at these uh, programs. So, those of you who are can do this much faster, better, and easier. Unfortunately, I'm just going to show you the basics of how to get the data in here and graphed. Then you're going to have to play with the charts because I really don't understand half of it. Um, I just haven't played with it enough. So, basically, this is an old layout. Um, over here on the left, you see this data as we go down those were time frames um, I started this at uh, 12 a.m. 50 seconds and ran it until uh, looks like about 11.45 so it ran approximately 12 hours almost on this little battery right here that little pulse motor ran that long on this little this little bitty little bitty cell. Pretty cool actually. Um, and then I basically took that data and graphed it. Now I've done this a couple times and graphed it across the chart. Again the time down here is all messed up because I frankly I don't I haven't messed with it enough. But nonetheless you can see I've, I've ch charted that data. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm just going to uh, go to new and uh, yeah alright whatever. As you can tell I don't even know how to use this program. Alright, so basically I'm going to go to uh, data. I'm going to go basically import and I'm going to do it from text. And I put it on my desktop. I'm going to go grab it. Oh, 
Um, let's go all files. All right, it's the log right there. Now, here's where you can define the different things. Um, this one's new. It might even work out a little better. But basically, I'm going to separate by columns. So the first thing I want to do is do a semicolon. All right, and that separates my fields. And then uh, I think you can even turn on and off each one you want. I think I did a dash at one time. Somebody watching me is probably laughing really hard right now. All right, good enough. I've got the time separated. I've got the date separated. And I've got the voltage here separated. Those are labeled wrong, but it's fine. Um, all right, next. And you can turn these off. I don't care about this this data log a number, so I'm just going to say do not. General, I would like it, the time, obviously. Uh, I don't care so much about this general, which the volts per division should have ended up here, but it's fine. And then this here. Now, you can check, like, different things. I'm just going to put text. General's fine. So let's just try that and hit finish. And then it tells me where I want to put it. That's fine. Okay, and basically I come up with these numbers. Now to define these even more, and I'm going to relabel this. I'm going to put time, and I'm going to put volts, V-O-L-T-S. Alright, and I'm going to highlight these to get rid of the parentheses. Um, you guys out there watching me that know how to data do data is probably laughing your butt off. And that's cool. Alright, right click, and... Um, Filter or sort? I think filter. Hmm. Gotta remember. Oh, here we go. Up here in the top. See, this is different than what some of you guys are doing. Um, okay. Data verification. Well, let me find out because I don't remember. Alright, I'm sorry. You just gotta select one row. And I turned on this filter. I don't want that on. Oh, I'll leave it for now. Oh, there. Okay, so you just select the one row. And click up here to columns to text. And then basically, I'm, it, you can remove certain things. And that's all I'm doing. I'm removing the parentheses. Finish. I want to do the same thing to the volts. There's a different way to do this in every single one of these programs. This is a new version. Okay, so I've got rid of the data. Now as I've got these two columns of data, okay, and basically all I'm going to do is graph them. So somewhere we can graph them. Insert a line graph, and I believe. Hmm. Try that one. All right, there you go. And you can see the wonderful graphed data. Now, there should be a way to go in here and add points, but this is voltage, and you can make this chart smaller or bigger, but the point here is to show you what happens. So between 111.18 and 119.29 or so, maybe a little less, it ran. So you can see where I it was floating. I shorted it out. I charged it. You can see how fast the charge time is. Now, if you want to make this better, you can go with every, you know, second or even half second, maybe. I'm not sure. Pulse fire. I think it's every second. All right. Discharge, discharge, discharge. All right. Charge it up. Ran the motor. I shorted it out. I charged it up. I ran the motor. I let it kind of float. I discharged it. I let it kind of float. Charged it up. And there it was floating again. And basically what you can do is you can separate these out and overlay them. So you can see run 1, you can see run 2, you can see run 3, and then you can basically just graph these out. I mean, that's the whole point of this. So that is how you use Pulsefire to do data logging on graphing. Now, I know William's been working on uh, finding a way to do RPM and using uh, like a hall sensor on your magnet to find the RPM. But for this instance, hey, that's what you get. Um, so, yeah.
Hope you guys enjoyed that, and sorry about the terribly long footage it took to actually get this done. But I told you guys I wanted to show you, and now I did. Um, but for those of you who have been waiting, I told you I was going to tell you. This little battery, it ran for about 12 hours. Pretty cool. Um, I did run a battery to this size and graft it. And uh, frankly, I'm not quite sure where half that information went. I know I played with it for a very long time. But uh, but I didn't save it. Let's see if I can find it. I know uh, I play with the data and I couldn't get it just right. That's what took me so long to get this uh, made. Um, little guy on cell phone three point seven. Let's see what this is. All right. So for instance, this was my full run. I call this the little guy, and that uh, that lighting sucks. But oh well. Anyway, for those of you who really would like to know, here it is. So this is my volts. You can see my chart only goes down from 3.3, all right, to uh, 4.1. And then here, this is time in hours. Okay. So I got here, battery is 850 milliamps rated at 3.7 volt DC. I'm using 32 milliwatts at 9 or 3.9 volts divided by 0 0.006 milliamps. Battery should be should last 99.16 hours. That's 80% loss, so 141 hours with no losses. And I ran what's that? 140, probably about 140 with no loss. So in theory, because I was recharging this battery. I got more runtime out of this battery than I should have calculated it. And that's a good thing because I was recharging. This is 150 hours. This is like a long time, almost a week, that it ran, that little pulse motor ran on this single battery. So that's how data logging can be useful. Now, I did do this multiple times and I'm not sure where all the data went, but uh, I think I gave up because I couldn't get it graphed right and I didn't feel like messing with it for the time being. but. For those of you out there who uh, know a little bit more about this, you can uh, you can figure that out and share it with us. Make a video. Let me know, and I'll post it uh, post it on the Pulse Fire thread. Actually, I'll probably put this on the Pulse Fire thread. Maybe not. I might put it in two places. Anyway, uh, I've been your host, Russ, and I know it was a little slow at the get go. Um, you'll definitely have to just sit here and play with this software. This software is got a ton of options. And you'll just need to sit there and play with it until you get it the way you like it. Other than that, I'm not going to bore you anymore. Peace and love to you all. Go check out rwgresearch.com and open-source-energy.org. Leave your comments and posts on this video. If you got questions, please do not leave questions on the comments because I'll probably never respond to them because they'll be very technical. You need to go to the forums and post where you found the software. Or if you can't find it, go to the uh, open source uh, projects forum and find Pulse Fire and post it on there and William will probably get back with you. Anyway, other than that, about, what, 20, 30 bucks for an Arduino? You got yourself a data logger. And uh, William, appreciate all the work you've been doing on this. And I know a lot of other people have. I've been showing them the software and they've just been amazed by it. So other than that, I'm out. You guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. See ya.